All right, guys. So yesterday we talked about finding interquartile range. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking those um, pieces that we found yesterday and putting them on a graphical display called a box plot. So our target for today is I can identify and analyze numerical data on a, on a box plot. So first things first, what is a box plot? Well, a box plot is just a graphical display that highlights the lower extreme, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the upper extreme. Okay, so here's what a box plot looks like. We call it a box plot because it is a box that is plotted on a number line. Okay, so there's some key characteristics here. If you look in the dead center of the box plot, there is a line. Okay, that line represents the median of the data set. Okay, so just like it's in the middle of the data set, it's that line in the very middle of our box plot represents the median. Okay, now we have these little lines on the ends here. And what those do is those highlight the lower extreme or the minimum and the upper extreme or the same thing as the maximum, the highest and lowest numbers in our data set. All right, now there's two other lines on here. And those two other lines, this one represents our lower quartile and this one here represents our upper quartile. Okay, so looking at a box plot, it's very easy and very quick to see all of our pieces. The first line is your lower extreme, okay? The next line or the outside of the box is your lower quartile. The line that goes in the middle of the data set, it's in the middle, it's our median, okay? The other line on the other side of our box is our upper quartile and then the, the farthest one is your maximum or your upper extreme, okay? So let's take a look at this box plot here. And we're gonna do some calculations, some mathematical calculations. Some of them are gonna be very easy Okay, and then we'll get more into um, a little bit tougher stuff here in just a minute. Okay, so the first question on your paper says, do this along with me please, it says what's the median cost of the collection of DVDs? If we look at our box plot here, this represents cost of DVDs. Okay, so if we go to our number line here, we can see that our median is right there in the middle. Okay, it's a 20. So the median cost for DVDs is $20. Okay, our lower quartile is easy to identify. We'll just come over here. Okay, and our me or our, sorry, our lower quartile is at 15. Okay, oh sorry, our upper quartile, if we go to the other side, is at the um, 26 mark. Okay, now you can't see it on my screen because it got cut off, but number four asks you for the interquartile range. We learned yesterday that to calculate interquartile range we have to subtract the upper quartile from the lower quartile. Today, there's no math to do, okay? The box plot shows us what those are. So we're just gonna do 26 minus 15, and we get the an inner quartile range of 11, okay? All right, so we're on to number five. It says, what is the lower extreme? What is the minimum cost for a DVD? Well, the minimum cost is $7, okay? What's the upper extreme? The upper extreme is our maximum cost. It's our most expensive, and it's $29. Um, on the first day of our statistical calculations, we learned to calculate range, and that was the maximum minus the minimum. So to calculate range, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our maximum minus minimum, and we get that the range of the DVD cost is $22, okay? All right, now, I want you to pause the video and do this one by yourself, okay? I want you to pick out the median, the lower quartile, the upper quartile, the inner, find the inner quartile range, your lower extreme, upper extreme, and your range. And um, when you're ready, when you're finished with those one through seven questions, play it and give yourself a check mark for the ones that you got correct. All right, so our median here is 75. The lower quartile is 70. The upper quartile is 85. The inner quartile range is 15. The lower quartile, sorry, the lower extreme is 55. The upper, ex, the upper quartile, upper extreme is 100. So that makes the range altogether 45. Okay, hopefully we got all of those right. Everybody got check marks for that. So let's take a look at this question here. This is called a double box plot. It's where there's a box plot on the top and a box plot underneath of it. 
And so our question says, which of the following is a true statement concerning the box plot above? Okay, A, the lower quartiles are equal. So all we have to do is we have to look. Here's my lower quartile for the blue chart for Ken, um, and it's a 78. Here's the lower quartile for Ray, and he's at a 77. So we can immediately tell that the lower quartiles are not equal, and that is not a true statement. Okay, so let's look for the upper quartiles. Are the upper quartiles equal? Ken's upper quartile is an 84. Ray's upper quartile is an 82. Those are not equivalent. They are not the same. Therefore, that also can be marked out. That's not a true statement. All right, so let's take a look. C says they both have the same median. The median for Ken is 78. The median for Ray is also 78. This one is true, but let's go ahead and check D just to make sure. D says the range is the same for both sets of data, okay? We can immediately tell that the range is not the same because Ray's upper extreme is different than Ken's. They both do have the same lower extreme, but since they don't have the upper extreme, their range will be different. So the only answer choice that is correct on this one is that they have the same median and that median is 78. Okay, all right. What I want you to do is pause the video, do this one by yourself. When you're ready, press play and um, check and make sure that your answer is correct. You're looking for which of the following is true concerning this double box plot. All right, if you take a look at this double box plot, you can see that the minimum of 40 and the maximum of 55 are the same on both box plots. Therefore, we know that the range is the same for both sets of data, okay? They don't have the same lower quartile, they do not have the same median, and they don't have the same upper quartile. However, they do have the same upper extreme and lower extreme, so when we subtract, 55 minus 40 it has a range of 15. And when we subtract 55 minus 40, this one has a range of 15. So the range is the same for both data sets. All right, so the big reason that we make box plots or the big reason that we find interquartile range is that we can break the data up into equal parts, four equal parts, and we call those quartiles. Now, a quartile when broken up into four equal sections, each quartile is worth 25%, okay? So each section of a box plot represents 25% of the data. So if we take a look at this box plot here, this section from our lower extreme to our lower quartile is worth 25%, okay? So if, for example, if this was a test score that we um, have made into a box plot, if you got a 60, Okay, you would fall in the bottom 25% of data. Okay, all right. This section from the lower quartile to the median is another 25%. Let's say, for example, you got a 75 on this test. If you got a 75 on this test, here's 25%, here's 25%. So you would be right in the middle, the 50th percentile. Okay. Obviously, from the median to the upper quartile is another section of our box plot, so it's another 25% of data. Let's say um, you got an 85 on this test. Here's 25%, 25%, 25%. So that would be the 75th percentile. Now, the last section from the upper quartile to the upper extreme is our last 25% of data. Let's say you really nailed it and you got 100% on this test. That means you got a hundred and you scored in the hundredth percentile. You scored better than a hundred percent of people that took this test. Okay. All right. So important notes. The median represents the middle 50%. Okay. It's the halfway point. It's the middle, middle 50th percent. And so that's the 50th percentile. The upper extreme or the highest value represents the hundredth percentile of the data set. Okay. The hundredth percentile, that's the very best possible score that was, that was taken, okay? All right, 
So let's do an example here where we're talking about quiz scores. And it says, um, here's our box plot. Amanda scored a 75 on her statistics test. Which of the following is true about her score? So here is her 75th or her 75% um, percent. and we can see that there's a section here and a section here that are below her score. Also two sections above her score. So we can go through our answer choices here. It says 25% of students scored below Amanda while 75% scored above. 50% scored below and 50% scored above. 75% of students scored below while 25% of students scored above. And uh, D on your paper says Amanda scored higher than 100% of the students that took the quiz. So looking at her score, we know her score is the median, okay? There's one section worth 25, two sections worth 25. So there's 50% below her, uh, two sections worth of 25 above her. So 50% is above her. She is the very middle 50th percentile. So the only answer that's correct is B, 50% of students scored below her and 50% of students scored above her, okay? Example two, it says Sarah, okay, so this box plot is a number of siblings survey and we can see that it ranges from one to nine siblings with um, the median or the middle number being a four siblings, okay? So it says Sarah has three siblings. Which of the following is true about the number of siblings compared to that of her classmates? So we know that Sarah has three, okay? So here is Sarah, and there's only one section below her. And we know that one section of the box plot is worth 25%. So 25% are below Sarah, and then there are three sections above her. We know that each section is above her is worth 25%. So here's 25, 50, 75% are above her. So we're looking for our answer choice that says about 25% below Sarah, while there was 75% above Sarah. That is A, okay? 25% of Sarah's classmates have less siblings and 75% of her classmates have more. Sarah is in the 25th percentile, okay? All right, so, Example three says these a uh, double um, box plot once again, where we're looking at minutes spent on homework each night, and it says Jacob spends sixty minutes each night using working on homework. Use the box plot to tell what percentile he falls in. So homework spent each night, and Jacob spends sixty minutes. So if we take a look, there's one, two, three sections below him. So that's twenty five, twenty five, twenty five. Jacob is in the 75th percentile. So he studies 75% of students spend less time while 25% of students spend more time on homework than Jacob, okay? It says Jacob watches 60 minutes of TV per night. What percentile does he fall in for 60 minutes? Well, 60 is the median, okay? So we could say that Jacob spent, there's 25, 25 below him. 25, 25 above him. So, Jacob, 50% of students spend less time watching TV, while 50% of students also spend more time. He is the 50th percentile, okay? Alrighty, so now what you're gonna be working on is you're going to take these skills that you've learned and you're gonna apply them to some, to some real world situations. So keep your notes out on your desk. You're gonna need them to help you and go to Google Classroom. There's 20 questions for you to work through where you just have to read the situation and answer the question. Now, you do need to write your answers on a separate sheet of paper just so you have something to turn in in case it doesn't get submitted or something, you have all of your answers down. Um, submit that and when you get finished, I've got a statistics review game posted on Google Classroom for you to do, okay? So keep your notes on your desk, look at them as you go through the Google Classroom. It's um, analyzing box plots practice, okay? When you get finished with that, if you put your answers on a separate sheet of paper, make sure you turn that into the first period box, and then there's a statistics review game for you to play on Google Classroom. All right, guys, I hope you all have a fantastic Friday. If for some reason you don't finish those uh, analyzing box plots practice in class, finish that over the weekend and turn it in on Monday. All right, I'll see you then.